This is the final part of single life. You do not want to miss it. Welcome back, everybody. You know what this channel is about. I'm gonna speak honestly and openly about my experiences and my thoughts and opinions. So, Anthony O'Neill uploaded a video called Dating Your Friend's Ex, The Official Rules. Oh shit, part five, here we go. Are y'all ready to react? Cause I am, let's get it. Hey, here's a, here, here go a question, here go a question. Yeah. He asked you, you said no. Uh-huh. A year later, he asked Mandisa. He asked Simone. Yeah, this town's know each too other. small. It's gonna, it's fine. Everybody's like to everybody else. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. And it you is, all wouldn't care. If it's <laughs> no, I mean, there's just not enough. Are you serious? Okay. There's just not enough. We're on camera. You, I can't say that. You can say it on camera to me. I, I, uh, want, I want to date to the guy. Okay. <laughs> Go there. <laughs> if there's a situation where. Come on, if, there, <laughs> if there's a situation where here we go, R five. Could you? I have a lot to say about that, but I need I need more information on that question. Two, eight man. And I was like, oh. like I got scared. <laughs> I got so scared. I think deep down, women want to be pursued. When you reverse the roles, it just gets fuzzy. Can you date more than one woman? <laughs> if I say you're beautiful. <laughs> that was just the recap. If of there's the last a situation video. where, oh, man. tell the story, girl. <laughs> tell it. If there's a situation where someone shows interest in you, but you are not interested in them, and you're interested in someone they may be close to, uh -huh. but they got a code where it's like they're like, nah, this is my territory. Not technically with their words, but like, nah, I'm into them. And it's like an issue if you are interested in like you can't spark anything here because of this i don't know where that's going with that in a situation like that it makes it harder but in my mind i'm just like look because i've experienced it already in the past mm -hmm. where a close friend of mine ended up liking the guy that wasn't into me i was like all right you deal with it yeah it hurts and it's tough but at the end of the day what if god called them to be together right yeah that's right. selfish that's of me you just went right. spiritual though um that's practical too though that's right. That's very practical because if you're not, let's say they, okay, let's, let's go practice. Okay, I will say this. This happens a lot, more often than what you think. I believe that too. What's meant to be is meant to be. If the person asked you on a date and you refused and this person asked your friend on a date months later, I see nothing wrong with that at all because a date didn't even occur. Or even if you were dating, does it really matter? It wasn't serious, it wasn't a commitment. Now, I do think differently if it was in a relationship. I think if you were in a relationship that lasted about, mm, I'm gonna say about a year plus, uh, it's kind of shady for that person to just want to spark something with your friend. That's, I don't know, that's a little bit too much. But then again, I do believe in what's meant to be is meant to be, so. It might hurt, but hey, maybe they're meant to be together. Like, if they don't mesh, if I don't mesh well with him, and he doesn't see that vision with me in it, mm -hmm. but he sees it like, man, I see this with her. And then, <laughs> if I get in the way like, nah, I want that, but there's nothing that's gonna happen. That's selfish. Okay, cool, so let's say y'all went out on a date. It was good, but then... But what if the person left not in, both, like, well, go ahead, finish. Yeah, yeah I like that, mm -hmm. I'm going to the same place. You two went out on a date, mm -hmm. Didn't work. A year later, now you're interested in his friend. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with Is that. Is that all grounds? To There's me, nothing wrong with that. No. <laughs> to, to him? The friend? Shh. To the friend. It, it, let's say the friend has a problem with that. I mean, but everybody's dated someone before the person. It's like the bro code. You know, you guys heard of that shit before. Guys, guys break the bro code all the fucking time. Okay, I ain't lying. They'll, they'll fuck anybody. Right now. Yeah, we right. just can't to draw those lines. The Lord is not going to let you marry someone else's husband. That's just not how this works. Hmm. And so if me and him didn't work out, but me and him give it a run and they're bros, like, hmm. I mean, your boyfriend had girlfriends before you, totally. right? Yeah. Yes. And, and, do you I know, know Did you know yeah. any yes. of them? Yes. yes. I was friends with his ex. Yeah. And you was cool with it? Yeah. 
Wow. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, she's very mature, though. Like, I feel like... How was she in the beginning? Oh, well, okay, I haven't talked with her about it, so yeah. I don't know. But oh, wow. I, I knew him answer. while they were dating. Yeah. Oh. I think you should talk to her. She don't need to. She got Why? <laughs> they both moved on. Oh, Who like, cares? <laughs> were y'all close to her or no? Yeah, I mean, we were friends. You know, so y'all didn't communicate like. And, okay, so my boyfriend, we toured together for uh, the same artist. So we were like friends. We got yeah. to know each other as friends. I, like, filled out her all access pass when she would come visit us for yeah. shows. You know, like, so I had interacted with her, mm -hmm. and I was like, they're respectable people. I yeah. have respect for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so I was like, yeah, I'm fine with it. Damn. So I, 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 feel, I, feel, like, way. I like, feel like you got men who may have dated a woman in the past, and let's say his bro, you know, ends up dating her, you know, three years later, but y'all only had like a little fling, you know, y'all was just kicking it for like two or three months. I think from one of those it guys' perspectives, okay. I mean, perspective, like, they would see more so a, a territorial, like, I used to have that, and they may feel some type of way about it, so like that, uh, what that ego that gets in the right. way. Right, I was just about to say that, that ego and that pride. It's that macho shit. Now, some guys that, hey, bro, do your thing. I'm yeah. one of those guys. Do your just, thing. I think it's the situation. Yeah. yeah. If I'm bringing my girl around, we all in the big happy family, you know what I'm saying? Me and my girl start <laughs> having true. problems. Yeah. That's true. But then I find out she's talking to him. Ooh. Yeah, that's different. Right. That's, that's different. different. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fucked up. You know, that shoulder to lean on type shit. They cry on their shoulders and all of a sudden they're interested in each other and boom, they're together. I think that's kind of fucked up, you know, especially if they were around the group. It was always the same group all the time. Because then it makes you wonder, did you guys always have an interest in each other? It may not have been the case, but it's definitely something I would have wondered. Or they, you know, they met for lunch. Or was she, her office is right across from him. Like, it's, it, I guess yeah. it's just a situation. I mean, yeah. I dated a guy that I'm friends so. with the last girl he dated. And I but like I said, it will hurt. But by the end of the day, what's meant to be is meant to be. I call her and be like, is this what you experienced? She's wow. like, yeah. And I was like, really? great, we're on the right path. I mean, she, yeah. she's engaged to someone else. It's been two years. Yeah. It was actually incredibly helpful yeah. for me to have someone who has, because he and I were strangers when yeah. we met. That's how it goes. But we weren't like <laughs> pals before. We weren't yeah. friends before. Yeah. And so I can say to her, hey, is this a normal experience? Is this way? And she's like, yeah, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go here. Just be real. I want y'all to think about this before you answer it. Here we go. All of us in this room are single. So maybe dating, okay? But you're not married. So my mama would say, if you ain't married, you single. You're single, right? <laughs> um, why? Why what? Why are you single? Why? Why are you single? Not why. <laughs> what would they say about you? Why are you deep down still single? I feel like that question. It's pretty much the same question you asked in part one. I think everyone already explained. Or let's hear, let's listen. When he, when he asked why am I still single? <laughs> Everyone's stuck. <laughs> and sometimes it's so natural for me to give like a cliche answer of, oh, because it's God, I mean, God's timing is a legit <laughs> answer. But I wanted to take time to like take, you know, self check and be like, you know, am I really ready? I'm scared. Mm. I'm scared of what? I'm scared of giving the real version of me to somebody who doesn't get it. So you fake with us tonight? <laughs> I've just met y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be real. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm with but, you. But no, it's, it's, you got to think, man. In your, I, and I put everybody into these percentages, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I'm dating somebody, that's the top 2%. Mm. That's in there with my family, and that's with my you know, stuff about me. That other people don't know. Actually, that's my number one. Because the person that I'm dating, I'm letting them know everything about me. They're going to get to know how I am, why I do the things I, I do, why I say the things I say. They're going to know about my past, my trauma, my experiences. They're going to know me for me as, as a whole. My parents don't know me all that well because, you know, as, a, as adult children, we have our own lives and we branch off and we become who we become. And I don't really have those conversations with my parents or my siblings. So yes, my partner is my top. You know my ups and downs. You know 
my love language. I am. That's something that we never talked about. Because once I read that book, it opened me up to real communication. Yeah. So are you that person that's willing to figure those things out about me? Or you just want to be there and just go along with it? Like, are you there to make me better? Because sometimes you always meet the representative of the person the first six months. Mm. They might be there just because, hey, I saw, saw Anthony on TV. I don't want to get on TV. You never know. Mm -hmm. For me, when it comes to fear, okay, I'm single by choice. I've had many experiences to the point where I need a break, okay? I am mentally from all that. I want to go on this journey alone and just do some soul searching first before I jump right into another relationship. But when I do get to that point, I am fearful only because I am afraid that they're going to lose interest. Every person that I've dated have always pursued me first. I wasn't interested right away emotionally. But once I got in it, I put my 100%. I put all of me in it. But then as time passes, it's always the other person who tends to lose interest and it's me trying to gain it back. So I'm afraid of that, of going through that again. I really want them to be in it all the way. So I'm scared that what if you say, okay, cause I'm a sucker for a cute face. Mm. <laughs> I'm sucker, dude. Like, just totally just, throws me off. Just a cute face. Not a good body, but a cute face. Come on, man. You know, <laughs> you know the, the, the Lulu pants and, you know, like just, but anyways, I'm just scared that. <laughs> you know, you put your time and effort. Like I told you, man, my energy is important to me. Yeah, hey, I feel you. And okay. I want to invest my energy because I'm that corny guy. Anybody uh, else scared? <laughs> Be honest. Come on, guys. Uh, Come on, fellas, especially you I guys. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm scared, but I'm more so focused in loving myself before taking the next step with someone else. And you don't have to be love. We ain't talking about love. Well, we ain't talking about love, but loving yourself is important before putting that energy into somebody else. Right. What I mean by yourself, I mean every aspect of yourself and whatever you're trying to accomplish or wherever you're trying to go in life, everything that you need to do to have yourself at least put together enough to where you could, you know, date someone and then potentially, you know, crash everything together in a good way. You know, but. <laughs> right. I want to be strong enough to take on whatever comes our way, not just whatever comes my way. So I need to do that first. Um, I'm more so focused on my <laughs> relationship and with my family, you know, my, my friends, you know, God most importantly. So that's just how I feel about it. Ladies? Y'all quiet over here. Yeah, come on, ladies. Let's hear you out. Oof. What you gotta say? I'm really thinking deep down. Huh? You are. <laughs> women are thinkers. Deep. Not to say that men aren't, but okay, I'm, okay. Um, I'm single because, I mean, y'all have to let me go deep for a moment. Let's yeah. go. One, because it's God's plan for me right now. Like, it's not because there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with everybody. Mm -hmm. You don't right. have to be perfect right. to be married. Right. Um, if we're gonna get specific about why I'm single, there are some things that God is still working on me with. Like yes. there are some rough edges that he's fine tuning. There yes, are some girl. things that happened in my past that he's currently healing. Yes, and had I gone into a marriage with that baggage on me right now, it would have been a hot mess. And so there you go. Ultimately, it comes down to his timing. Um, I, I want that next person to not give up on me. I have my flaws, I have my imperfections, but I want my flaws to be accepted, but not taken over, if that makes any sense. Like, I want them to help me become a better me and not just give up because they feel that, like I'm a burden in some way. That's also a fear of mine. It's not done with me yet. <laughs> uh, that kind of goes with my being scared. It's, it's, it's right. one of those things where you fear. know that there are things that you want self-mastery. Yeah. That's, man, every morning I get up, you know, self-master. I want to get better at something every day. Mm. And you get with a person who doesn't respect that aspect of you. Mm. And, I mean, they always say the number one thing in divorce is unfulfilled expectations. Mm. Mm. So it's just one of those things where I'm scared because I know there are things about me that I know I need to change. Mm -hmm. But do you really want somebody in your face? You need to do this. You need to be this. You need to be that. Patience. You like, mm. Patience. See, I, on the other hand, I have a lot of patience. And 
I'm very open with accepting people's flaws and all that. It's just, it's not like that the other way around. And in marriage, though, not in my case, based on all the relationships that I have with people who are married, it's a mirror and it actually does help you to get to the place where you are who God created you to be. I just think as healthy as you can be going on to a marriage, be that healthy. So use this time while we're single right now yes. to be who God made you to be, knowing that the man or the woman isn't going to complete you. Yeah. But if you yes. can be as complete as you can before you get to that person, your marriage is going to be better off. Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree. And I, that's what I feel. I feel like my next relationship, not the person I'm dating, because who knows, my next relationship will be me in a better place, 100%. Just uh, Y'all ain't talking. I'm coming back to you too, Annie, because Annie over there thinking. <laughs> <sighs> to the fear part that's what I was really thinking about um, I think for me like it's so easy for someone to look at all the great things that you have but when mm. they get to know you mm. like I, I, the fear part is like okay when you get to know every part of me tying to what you said like are you gonna run away like if this rubs you the wrong right. way are you just gonna be like yeah I don't wanna deal with that and just dip I think that fear of the being abandoned mm-hmm. which ties into the captivating book this woman's yeah. fear is being abandoned. And that's why it's just like, mm-hmm. yes, you find it in Christ, but the reality is I'm still human and I have, mm-hmm. I'm a human being. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, is this person really going to stick through? Like, so mm-hmm. that's the fear part. Why I think I'm still single. I think I'm in a place of really taking care of Simone and loving every part of Simone. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, and, and I'm still in that journey of being completely content. I really yes. believe that when I'm in a place of being completely content, that all the extra stuff will be added. I along agree. With the husband. I agree. So I don't know if I'm ready. So, I'm definitely not ready. <laughs> I'm definitely I think not a ready. A lot of people do cannot answer that question if they're ready or not ready. So I respect that. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. <clears throat> I think uh, I need to be okay with living without a partner. I've always had someone. I've always dated someone. It was always one person after the other. The longest time I've been single was six months. My whole entire life, okay? I'm 36 years old. Six months. And that's when I found my my ex-wife. And that's when we got married and all that stuff. We're together for five years. My longest relationship. But I've always had someone. I don't want to be dependent on someone else. Emotionally, spiritually, mentally, all that. I want to feel that I'll be okay with or without someone? I think a lot is the Lord's timing. Like, I really trust Him. Um, so I'm not concerned, but I, it is like, it's confusing, right? Because you're like, what is it? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. Like, I haven't met anyone who I feel compatible with in that way, you know? Mm. Um, I don't know. We'll let you slide. You're not single. But you're single, but not single. Right. I mean, I was single for four years before I started dating. For real? Yeah. Why were you single that long? I think that... I think I needed to get to a place where I was allowing myself to have one thing that I couldn't just do for myself. Mm. You know, because, like, I think as Enneagram 3, I'm like, I can do this. And, you know, Mm. I'm very driven to get what I want. And it was the one thing that God was like, you can't do this on your own. Mm. You know, and I remember getting to that point of like I was traveling so much and we did this show at Disney and we were we had like a free day to go through the park and I just remember thinking, Man, I would really love to do this with someone, you know? Right, right. And it was that I'm always gonna feel that way because that's what I'm used to. But I'm trying to get out of that mentality. Weekend after I got back and I had just gotten off of a seventy day tour, so I was like going, going, going. And I remember getting into my bedroom and just being like, God, like I'm just going to pray. Like, it was one of the few moments where I've prayed out loud and just been like, God, I feel like I'm not assuming that I'm ready, but I'm praying that you would make make me ready. And I'm praying that this provision would come. And I'm not kidding you. It was the next morning that my boyfriend texted me and was like, hey, how you been? Like, we should grab coffee. (laughs) That's crazy. And it was one of those things where... I think that's... Okay, girl, thank you for saying that because I will not be praying for that because I ain't ready. By the Lord. And I don't want it to come when I ain't ready with me yeah. like he's like there are going to be certain things that I'm going to make you desperate for mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that you know that you need to rely on me and this is something you can't do with your own hands uh, yes. okay. I, like so I like that I 
Man, um, at one point I would say that I just couldn't find anyone to really match my drive. Mm. Mm. Um, like I said before, I've dated someone that I basically I poured everything into them and it seemed like I would get nothing in return. Uh, Not because yes. you know, they weren't putting forth the effort, it just seemed like they didn't have anything to give. Yes. And that's different. And, and that's my issue is I feel like I'm pursuing the wrong people. The women I've noticed that I've been in relationships with are troubled. And I don't know if that makes any sense. I feel like I'm, I'm always looking for someone to help. When I get into the situation, it's like, this is what I get, this is what I asked for. I mean, this is, I knew what I was getting myself involved with and this is what I got. So of course I'm gonna feel neglected because no one's there to help me. And, and I'm not talking about financially, I'm talking about mentally and emotionally. Like, no one really catered to my feelings and my thoughts and all that. So, I mean, I think I have to change the kind of person that I pursue. It's different when you try and you still feel like you have nothing to give. So I couldn't fault her for that. But I did have right. to let that go because it was starting to wear on me. Um, to be honest, since then, um, I think I've found someone that does. But at the same time, I have a long life to live. Like I said, I'm only 25. Yes, you are young. I have a lot of trials, you know what I'm saying, I can go through right now. And still a lot to learn. So I'm not rushing that by no means. Mm -hmm. Do I think, Good. you know, she could be the one? For sure. Definitely. Am I going to say, oh, well, you're the one, let's make it happen? No, not right now. Because we both still have a lot to learn. Yes. So, yeah. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Annie? I don't know. Mm. I feel like I've done everything I know to do. Mm -hmm. I'm working on myself a lot. I'm going after what God's called me to, and I have no idea. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. How would you answer that question? <laughs> uh. It's crazy. This last video, this last part on this series, everyone got really serious. Like this, <laughs> this one's like a serious question. But I answer that question. Being transparent, Anthony's known for being real. Uh, I would definitely say that um, I had to heal. And I think men, we're very quick to get out of something and jump straight into another thing to fill a void that the last thing had. Right. And... <laughs> The last young lady, I loved her. I mean, I thought, I proposed, I thought she was my wife. And when I got out, I'm be honest and transparent, I immediately started dating someone else and it was a hot mess. Mm. And so I had to step back and just heal myself. Right. Then when I healed, because I've been single for so long, I, I identified that I'm very selfish, you know? Mm. And I was like... Being selfish as a single person is not bad, but being right. selfish going into In a, a relationship. marriage yes. is bad. And yes. so when I identified that, I started seeing a therapist just because I, I, I want to start working on myself now. So that way, when I do find my wife, I've, I'm not going to be perfect, like you said, but I'm going to be working on different things now that could be better. But... Um, I'm like you, Annie. And that's the thing I'm learning as well. I've only, like I said, I've only been single for a year. Not dating anyone at all. I've been single for five months. And I'm, I'm in that soul-searching process to where I'm learning more about myself. And what my flaws are and where I went wrong in all my relationships. And also the positive things. What I do have to offer. What, quali what great qualities I do carry. To everyone in this group. This single life moments, these times, is the best time to really learn about yourself. Take that time to do it before that person comes along. I've done everything. You know, I'm so you'll be ready for it. Um, um, I'm active. I have an accountability partner. Um, I, I submit myself to my pastor. I submit myself to other mentors. Um, you know, we have an accountability system within our our uh, organization at Ramsey Solutions to where they ask me personal questions. And, mm. um, and so now I'm just waiting uh, to find that perfect person. But I would definitely say before I met, I wanted to be the perfect man. 
So I wouldn't date anyone until my money was right, until I was driving this, until I had that because I wanted to be perfect. And I just quickly realized I'll never be a perfect individual. Right, right. I'll never, right. I'll never be everything that she needs me to be when we get right. married. And so now it's, it's, <clears throat> man, I'm just, I'm in my lane. I'm going after my purpose. Um, and what's so funny is you all are sitting in the living room of my house. Uh, when I built this house, I came out here with the Bible and um, planted it in the seed, uh, into the sand, into the all the oil and stuff way below this living room uh, because I told God, hey, uh, I, I want to stand on the foundation of your word because I mm. believe this is where I will start my family. At. Mm. Mm. And so I've done everything. And so now I'm just like, God, I'm patiently waiting on you. And it gets rough. Mm -hmm. Especially during that quarantine time, <laughs> waking up to this house and yeah. it's just me. You know what I'm saying? I can't go work out. I, 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 uh, I'm not going to the office. I'm not traveling. I'm not on the road. I mean, and I, we're gonna have those moments, especially me, because I'm so used to being with someone. I'm gonna have those moments like where I'm exploring wherever I'm at, and it's like, damn. This is nice. This feels good. But I know it'd be even better if I was like cuddling with someone here at this very moment when the sunrise is happening or that thing was funny. I giggle to myself. But if my partner was here with me, we'll be laughing hysterically. So you do have those moments, but you know. I really realized some stuff about myself and I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to change my son's diaper and he's Aww. all over my stuff. <laughs> That's you know, cute. I'm looking forward to that. So That's cute. I'm like you, Annie. I'm a two plus one, you know? I'm ready. But then I'm like, man, these are, I'm I'm cool. Like I'm I'm great. I can jump on the plane and go to New York and do media. Right. And I'm like, I love it. Right. Uh, but I can't wait to jump on the plane with my wife, with my kids, and do that as well. And the time so, will come. Um, don't, that's that's what this is all about, you guys. Just having that real conversation. Getting deep, going down. And just really talking. And I want to thank all of you for the time. You know, all of you all in this room are doing some amazing things. And I'm just so grateful that you all took some time from chill with your boy. Okay. You, know, you say it was now all of you guys can go hit up a bar and go mingle. You say it was free food, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that there reminds guys, me I'm man. hungry. Wow. Um, amazing night with amazing people. And if you've made it this far to the very end, thank you so much I for did. with your boy. You're you welcome. You guys know here, not at the table, but when you're with me, it's real, relatable, and relevant. And uh, we had some real conversations tonight. Not the normal type of conversations. They had me thinking on my own situation. Me and too. on the last panel, me too. I didn't say nothing. But these people ask me questions. <laughs> Lord I like have that. mercy. I like that. I like that. <laughs> but yo, thank you so much. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you check out what I'm going to do is I'm going to link uh, everyone's information down below. Go check them out. You okay. Know, you got some great artists. You have some great people. That's here what's up. Some great things. Hairstylists, drummers. Get some promotions speaker, out of it. Workout people. I mean, just sure some, some great people. So I'm going to link them below. Check them out. Thank you all so much. And I'm going to see you on the next video. That was great. Back in the hot seat. Back into the hot seat. Some bloopers. Hold on. Let's see this. I didn't know. My name is Vandisa. My name is Jalil Harris. My name is Elizabeth Chan. My name is Judah. Hi, my name is Lonnie. Simone Park. Annie F. Downs. My name is Wesley. One thing I do want to talk about tonight. Um, y'all can cut that right. Is there anything you're nervous about? The bloopers. Is it hot in here all of a sudden, or is it just me? <laughs> I was gonna ask how she feels about tonight, but this is like, this, this is how she feels. <laughs> You're a guy, I don't believe you. I'm just playing great. Um, first thing I'm gonna ask is your name and what oh, damn. question would you like to be brought up? Oh, damn, another person. Same guy. <laughs> don't think of it as a self. Think of Same it as fucking guy. <laughs> how I feel about tonight. I will say I enjoyed this whole series 
This series was actually filmed and posted almost a year ago and I just found it. So I am going to subscribe to his channel. He's probably got a lot of great videos on it. His name is Anthony O'Neill. You guys go over there and subscribe to his channel. I filmed this whole series in one day. Uh, I obviously posted it in different days. So who knows if my videos are gonna be demonetized. I don't know, I don't care. I had a great time filming this. So tell me what you thought about this series. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please hit that bell so you can get notified every time I upload. See you in the next video. Peace.